Grand Master Jinbodhi's Dharma Teachings The Six Perfections, Diligence from Learn About the Six Perfections What is diligence? Create a practice schedule, and carry it out. I call this diligent practice. My understanding is that it lies in action. Is my vow or consciousness helping me be aware of my wisdom and health level? Can I live for 30,000 days? Is my mental state high enough? We need to ask ourselves these questions. If the answer is no, have I done my practice to improve myself? When should I get up in the morning to practice? What time did I get up? I should do one good deed daily. What have I done? In dealing with people and matters, have I gotten angry or afflicted? We should conscientiously be aware of our practice and daily behaviors. Because we're not saints yet. Nor have we become Buddhas, Bodhisattvas or ultimately enlightened. We should be conscious and self-perceiving constantly. That's to manage our mind well. Am I doing right things? When I've seen fellow practitioners who've been here for a few years, I've often asked them, are you still practicing? Most of them have blushed. Master, I'm practicing. I doubted them. Are you practicing to be shy? Being shy before me indicates you haven't practiced well. Some, even though they had a terminal illness, dared to say, Master, I'm practicing. They don't practice diligently. I especially admire them. I feel like a hero is standing before me. You don't know when you will suddenly be gone. They're in such a critical condition, yet still don't practice. It's terrible. People have said diligent people are waiting for the doctor's verdict. This shows their laziness. Diligence is the opposite of laziness. How dangerous is this lazy attitude? Even if I'm about to die, I'd rather sleep than practice. Even if the ceiling is going to collapse and crush me, don't disturb my dream, I'm still enjoying it. It's like living in confusion like a drunkard. It's horrible. This behavior is foolish. The less you practice, the more ignorant you get. If you're not healthy, your brain won't function well. You're narrow-minded as well. Only practice stimulates us to become smarter, wiser, more broad-minded. So we're more reasonable and sensible when conducting ourselves and doing things. We come closer to the greater mental state of a saint. You'll be the greatest winner. Diligence leads to success. Without diligent practice, you will be abandoned by reality. Maybe, at a young age, you'll suffer all kinds of illness. Even if you're very educated, you'll still do foolish things. Regular practice will bring us health. Not only physically but also mentally, we'll be in a higher mental state. Cultivation can change us in these two aspects. You say, I listen to Master's teachings when I'm free. I'm learning other great cultivators and Master's teachings too. This will help me. Yes, I believe that. However, it will only bring you inspiration and knowledge. 
Without actual practice, you won't experience the essence. Your true practice and experience are the most genuine insight. In a movie, you're amazed by the scenery of a beautiful place. But if you actually get there and see it in person, the feeling could be very different. Watching actors eating in a movie, say, peaches, apples, plums or vinegar, maybe eating a piece of cake. Is a totally different feeling from your actual eating. Actual practice brings actual realization. Without actual practice, the realization is fake. You think you're enlightened, but that state of enlightenment isn't integrated into your inner world yet. So listening to the teachings, you think you're enlightened. You're greatly touched and inspired. Yet when you wake up the next morning, you're still ignorant, silly, lazy and bad-tempered. Without diligent practice, we won't achieve such wisdom. Truly, what a pity. You know the Dharma and the truth, but you take no action at all. It's a pity as you're just one step away from integrating your mental state and wisdom into one. Then you'll become a wise person. Wise people's words and their actions are synchronized. The three treasures in Buddhism are faith, vow and action. With faith, we have belief, with belief, we have vows. With faith and vows only, you take no action. Then, in the end, you can only go to hell. What's hell? All your confused, wrong behaviors, such as continuing to harm and do foolish things. Gambling cost your family fortune, but you think you're smart enough to win. This is what foolish people do. They don't practice diligently. During our practice, we may have wonderful sensations. Sometimes we feel nothing, sometimes we have no faith. Sometimes wealth, sex, fame and personal interests attract us. We should take all these as tests in life. Don't be attached to them. Once you're attached to them, you'll be trapped. Diligence is to act as planned. With vows, we must carry them out. This way you can achieve the highest mental state in life. Practice and meditate diligently. Actual practice brings actual realization. Be conscious and self-perceiving to obtain wisdom and illumination.